Hey guys, and welcome to an epic scrap I had about five minutes ago up against the might of Tree Spit here and his Warriors of Chaos. And it was such a good game, I thought, you know what, I'm going to hop straight into recording and get this battle underway because it is an absolute blast. And we're going to be bringing the forces of the High Elves, a faction I haven't played too much recently. I used to play them way back in the day quite a bit, but, you know, we're going to be trying a few things out and seeing how they work today. So we do have some Sylvan Guard dotted through the front line. In fact, it's a big old fat line of Sovereign Guard. They are a little bit more expensive than Spearmen, but I'm expecting them to hold the line for far, far longer and allow the rest of our build to really bring the punch. They're going to be our anvil for today. Now, for the hammer, we do have a triple archers, one of which, actually, maybe four archers? Yeah, it is four archers, two of which are Lothran Seaguard and two of which are basic archers. Very decent range, not the greatest AP, but hey, every arrow shall count. We have double silver helms just behind them for a bit of backline protection and then a pretty interesting leadership core. We do have double handmaidens of the Ever Queen pushing forward on cavalry here, so on some glorious elvish mounts, and they're going to be driving forward, looking to harass and pick apart key targets that my opponent may bring in the form of Manticore's Exalted Heroes or any of their more juicy and expensive units. We do have Teclas leading our force today. He's going to be coming in with a net in Feeble and Foe and Regrowth, as well as, of course, Bound, Fiery Convocation and the Sword of Teclas and all that goodness. And Teclas is a real versatile elvish character. Yes, he's not going to win any honours in combat, you know, in one-on-one -on -one up against a Chaos Lord, for example. He will have his butt absolutely handed to him, but his value really is in his versatility and what he can bring to the battlefield. For my opponent, we have a lovely load of skirmish calves. We have Marauder Horsemen and some Horse Masters on the right. It looks like the same pairing on the left-hand side. I've had double Horse Masters, so a little bit more elite there with the skirmish cavalry. For the infantry corps, we have basic Chaos Marauders dotted all the way along with one unit of Mirror Guard in the centre, the Regiment of Renown Chaos Warriors. And the reason he's gone so light on the infantry front is because we have some very expensive units in this build. We have Chaos Warriors with great weapons, protecting the Regiment of Renown Hell Cannon, the Soul of Damnation, and up in the sky with a Triple Flying Fret. A Feromance Core, an Exalted Hero on a Man's Core, and a Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Death coming in there on the two-headed dragon. Looks in absolutely crazed and badass as usual. The poison of choice today shall be the fate of Buna as well as Spirit Leech. So really looking to bring the pain to any more elite units I have brought. Now, luckily for me, Fair Buna is going to be pretty useless. I mean, he could pop it on the Silver Helms. So that's going to be his best target. But the Spirit Leech threat onto our Hero Core could be quite pivotal. But we do have Teclas with those regrowths. So, hey, hopefully he might be able to neuter the effectiveness somewhat of the Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Death's magic with our build. But one big problem for us is that Hell Cannon is going to be tough to reach here on this glorious snowy map. There's a giant hole in the middle. And uh, I'm trying to float my Silver Helms around this flank. But my opponent is well aware of this and does maneuver his flying troops to counter us where possible. Poor all off from the Seaguard, I kind of get obliterated by that Hell Cannon, who is already up to 30 kills, and the battle's not really even got underway yet. We've got a bit of counter skirmish onto the Horsemen, just with our Handmaidens of the Everqueen there, doing some relatively decent damage. Sovereign God will do absolutely fine up against Chaos Marauders as well. We're actually going to be charging in aggressively, not something the Elves usually like to do. They're more of a defensive faction, I would say, but hey, get in there, Ram rolling some spears in the front of the Chaos Marauders' faces is all for the cause. And the Archers are starting to loose some shots. One unit aiming here at the Marauder Horsemen, looking to push them back, the other into the Mirror Guard. Now, Mirror Guard have 100 armor and silver shields, and we have no Plague of Rust Caster today. But at the end of the day, loads of arrows coming in, pouring down. It should hopefully poke out the eyes and get in the chinks of the armor of the Mirror Guard. Horsemen are really getting dragged down right now. We are going to get aggressive with our Silver and Guard. We go for a rather risky spell here. The Bound Fiery Convocation, which is a ridiculously long wind-up time. But luckily, my opponent doesn't have... Oh, he manages to dodge some of it with this second unit, but a lot of units getting roasted right there. Teclas only up to 19 kills. Decent amount of HP damage across the board. We didn't go for the net combo there. I was trying to save the nets for these larger characters and allow uh, our archers time to really drag them down. Silver Helm's really reaving through the front line. I love this. They're just bouncing between combat, breaking two units and marauders so far, looking to perhaps charge into the last one. However, some lovely counterplay comes in by my opponent. Horse Masters raining down shots, trying to drag down our unshielded Silver Helms. Silver and Guard, I'm going to be pushing forward. I'm actually going to make a, a little bit of a drive to the Hell Cannon. And if my opponent wants to bring his Dragon and all other units over to distract that, hopefully that will buy us time to win the main fight in the front lines here. The Mirror Guard are uh, slicing and dicing, only up to three kills, however. They've been held back by the Silver and Guard, who've done a good job so far beating back Marauders. Silver Helms go for a rather risky charge into some great weapons and get absolutely carved to pieces. 
Manticore duo do come into the back here to try to snipe us out. Luckily, we do an overcast net of Amantok and able to pin them in with our Silver Helms and a load of bow pressure from the archers. You can see that Chaos Throne Manticore is going down really quickly right now and is in fact broken. However, the second Exiled Hero is going to pop in all its buffs, the Hellfire Saw, Deadly Onslaught and Foe Seeker, going after our Handmaiden who's going to do some 360 no scopes as she runs away on her mighty steed and that is one Manticore shattered off the battlefield. Hell Cannon though is still fully operational. It looks like our Silver Guard is going to be hit by something. A Breath Attack down the line here could be absolutely devastating. It looks like they're actually going to get hit by a Fate Abune. So a really interesting choice. I mean, it does magic damage. And Silver Guard, of course, have magic resistance. But uh, it looks like he's a little bit worried by the sheer amount of spears we have. So not a bad target, I suppose, at the end of the day. Good rear attack on the Silver Guard as well, allowing the Horseman to escape. And the poor Sovereign Guard are now going to get ramrodded from two angles. We do try a cavalry charge of our own. The Silver Helms lances lower charge headlong into the Chaos Warriors. But unfortunately, do get beat back once more. Archers continuing to sing. Arrow after arrow being loosed at the moment into the Mirror Guard. But they've been a real big fawn in my side. Handmaidens are constantly harassing this Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Death. Constantly trying to shoot him and uh, harry him, drive him away from the main elements of the battlefield. Sovereign Guard are continuing to push here, but unfortunately... We probably should have kept these bad boys together a little bit more because they're getting isolated here by the Exalted Heroes. And a lovely breath attack right down the flank there of the Silver and Guard. The Kel Sorcerer is paying for it whilst being shot, but I don't think the Silver and Guard are going to make it anywhere near the Hell Cannon to date. We do do another fiery convocation. Unfortunately, I missed that one there. This one was including a net this time, so the Mirror Guard cannot escape. And they took a massive punishment there. From Teclas, who's up to 37 kills now, done some really decent HP damage. Archers are starting to dwindle a little bit on ammunition. Lothra and the Sea Guard still have some acquired as well. And we're just sort of finishing off these great weapons, and Feebling Foe does go down on them whilst the Silver Helms clatter into the enemy. Force back the Horse Masters, force back those Warriors, and now even at the Mighty Mirror God, I think, are going to be starting to wave as Teclas moves into hand to hand combat. The Frail Elf finding the strength of his ancestors in his blood to keep going here. What an absolute champ! The Mirror Guard are forced back. Likewise, the Horse Masters are shattered. The Chaos Warriors are great weapons that are retreating. However, that Hell Cannon is up to 145 kills and some really lovely work. I'm just trying to save what ammunition and what units I can. The Hamains were taken off fire at will to enable them to use every single shot into that Chaos Sorcerer Lord or other key targets. Fairbuna, once again, used on the Silver and God, just trying to drag them down. I mean, he might as well use his magic on them, I suppose, because Spirit Leech in my characters is only going to make me do a regrowth, so going after something like the Sovereign Guard with a Fairbuna isn't the worst idea in the current situation, though normally it wouldn't be the best idea. Nevamatok does manage to pin in the Chaos Sorcerer Lord as the archers continue to pepper him down. Now, he is a rather tanky boy, of course, he's got two heads, and that means he eats a lot of food. So he is rather stocky and we are running relatively low on ammunition. But the more damage we can do to him, the better the balance power for us. But likewise, the more threat it is and more challenge for him to actually engage in combat. Silver Helms trying their best to finish off the Mirror Guard here. And the Chaos Marauders do get jumped, unfortunately, by that Chaos Sorcerer Lord. Who actually terrifies them away. They forsake their Elvish Vows and retreat once more. Spirit does get popped down on Teclas as that Chaos Sorcerer Lord is starting to waver. He does manage to just about skirt out of the way of those last few volumes of arrows. Handmaiden Ever Queen is out of ammunition. The second one though continuing those long range snipes with really good accuracy down just 570 HP there for the Chaos Sorcerer Lord. The uh, Lothran Sea Guard are raining shots now into the flank of the Mirror Guard trying to break them before they engage in combat. It looks like we did manage to fulfill that. Archers are basically out of ammunition, are forced into combat. We do have Teclas nearby and the Handmaiden and the Horse Masters not having a good day whatsoever. Particularly because of the crossfire coming in by the other Lothran Sea Guard. Now, Silver Helms are returning, likewise, our 18 archers with a load of ammo, although the uh, Hell Cannon could shut them down in just one or two good shots. Chaos Sorcerer Lord, very, very low, but he does need to rest coming forward a little bit and supporting his homies. Net of Amatok does go down on the Exalted Hero, who did pop all his buffs, unfortunately, in vain here. And now we can turn and shoot where possible. Lothran Sea Guard, though, are being tied down right now by some Chaos Marauders, and they're struggling to fend off the crazed and savaged Northmen. The Handmaid of the Queen is now out of ammunition as well. Didn't manage to kill the Sorcerer Lord, but does manage to break him. Down just 470 HP. And the Horse Masters are bouncing around between combats. But luckily for us, we do have some archers in the back. who continue to pour in shots. Marauders also shatter. And the Mirror Guard once again do rally, but they are so low. I don't know if they're actually going to make it realistically into combat. 
Exalted Hero charges in, but this time he is out of all of his buffs. So we're going to pop an Enfeebling Foe on him and come in with the double Handmaiden as well as Techless. We're going to pop a cheeky little regrowth on one of the Handmaidens to keep them in the fight a little while longer. And they're relatively decent melee combatants supported by the Silver and Guard. They're trying to stab and goad the beast into the clutches here of Techless, who with the help of the Handmaiden there, do drag down the feral creature. Now, the Handmaiden is getting a lovely little regrowth, so she's being topped up quite nicely. The other Handmaiden, though, is far weaker. We do manage to shatter, it seems like, the majority of my opponent's forces, and it actually is army losses kicking in here, and I can certainly see why. We still have three relatively powerful characters left on the field, and quite a decent amount of wins of magic, whereas, for, unfortunately, for the Chaos Sorcerer Lord, maybe on the charge some li really lucky RNG, a big tear out could have come down, but uh, one or two good hits, and he certainly would have been gone for. Now it's just a matter of this Hell Cannon, which is now out of ammunition. 214 kills was the cost though for us being a little bit more all right we're gonna get blade right by this hell cannon but i'm gonna try and get the victories where we can rather than sacrificing all of my units to hunt down the hell cannon we did go for one or two cheeky attempts initially with silver helms and then with silver and guard but they did backfire on us our opponent managed to drag us apart a little bit there and isolate some of our silver and guard units but well played the tree spit i'm pretty sure we've played before i don't know if it's tree spit or trees pit but either way, man, well played. I think we've played a few times on ladder and always seems like a uh, top top competitor there. So if you do watch this, well played, champ. And I absolutely love the build, man. The uh, Hell Cannon is very awesome. But likewise, the Chaos Sorcerer Lord on a two-headed dragon. Can't get much more rock and roll than that. The Chaos Gods will indeed be pleased. Our build across the board wasn't anything, you know, one particular standout unit, I don't think. But if I had to pick one... Probably this unit of archers, just shy of 2,000 damage value on such a cheap unit. That is some incredible, incredible money back on that unit. So I hope you guys did enjoy this one. I will go through the damage dealt and damage value of all of these units, of course, in a second. But if you guys enjoyed, make sure to do all the standard youtube stuff. Like, subscribe, comment down below what you thought of this awesome battle. And there are links in the description if you'd like to support me on Patreon. Or if you'd like to summit replays to me, get involved in tournaments and all that kind of jazz. You can join my Discord as well. All the links are dotted down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you've stayed this long in the video, you're an absolute legend and awesome. And let's hop into the damage dealt and damage value. Techless, just shy of a thousand damage value. The fire convocations were okay. They weren't you know, incredible, but they did help finish off the mirror guard. I'd argue that one was even more key than kind of the obliterating of the tuners of marauders. But the nets and regrowth were also quite tasty. 1.1k on this handmaiden, the other one 909. Now they're not the cheapest lords or heroes, I should say, in the game, but they do do some good long range harass. Kind of work in a similar way to Waystalkers, a little bit more short range I believe off the top of my head, but uh, and obviously no arrows of kernels, but you can pick them on horseback, which gives them a nice little niche there. Sovereign Guard, 350 and 67 damage value doesn't look great, 440, 360, 390, so Sovereign Guard really not getting much value whatsoever, but they did hold back the Tides of Chaos by in time for, for example, this unit of archers, 1.9k uh, value, the other 853, also very impressive for such a cheap unit. Now the Lothran Sea Guard were focused down quite a bit by the Hell Cannon, despite that still got you know, 300 and 400 damage value, nothing too insane, and the Silver Helms did okay. I mean, 260 is not good damage value, but the other unit got 1,000, which is very impressive. So, nice spread across the board. It really did come down to this archer unit, or the two archer units, combined with the net and the handmaidens, taking down the key units here of the Chaos build. Now, for my opponent, the Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Death, I do think the Fair Buners were decent picks. I would have used it early on on the Silver Helms, personally, and then just Spirit Leech spam Techless. Yes, he can regrowth, um, but, you know, he held his healing cap relatively quickly that way. But still, nonetheless, uh, some good breath attacks as well in the mid-game. 1.3k damage value, not too shabby. 1.1 on the Exiled Hero got some nice work in despite being assassinated in the later stages of the game. Now, the Marauders kind of suffered a similar fate to the Silver and Guard. Not that much damage across the board and not many kills. Chaos Warriors fared a little bit better, 400 value. 800 on the Mirror Guard despite getting hit by a Fiery Convocation is a pretty solid work. Horse Masters... Uh, 975 dam damage value is good. 440, 789, 63 on these horsemen. They did not fare well. Likewise, the Chaos Fair Man's course and they all goaded into a bad situation. Sword of Damnations, 2,224 damage value. Mwah. Beautiful play there by the bad boy. 14k damage dealt. 214 kills, a real standout there, which kept my forces at bay and punished me for dawdling too long. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was super good fun one to cast. And until next time, peace, peace, and as always, stay...